All right, Navigators, welcome to Wednesday Night Battle Station. Let's begin with our pledges. Everyone, please stand up, nice, tall, and straight. Right hand over the center of your chest. Wait for the command. Repeat after me. To the American flag first. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now to the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Let's turn our attention to the Bible. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Everyone stay standing. We're going to do some singing. All right, the two songs we're going to sing is I'm in the Lord's Army and I've decided to follow Jesus. Sing out now. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom more the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom more the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom on the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. All right, good job. One more. I've decided to follow Jesus. Ready to sing out now. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. So now go with me. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. All right, grab your Bibles and sit down ready for the lesson. All right, take your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. And our lesson tonight is on Abram's journey, not Abraham. God changed Abram's name to Abraham a little later in the book of Genesis. But here he is just Abram. And we're going to talk about Abram's journey. Now, Abram's journey, we're going to talk about it and take all of our main points and describe it as this. And Genesis 12 and verse 1, it said, Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out. Get thee out. And we're going to use that for our lesson today. But Abram's journey originally began when his family got out of Ur of the Chaldees. 
in Genesis 11, verse 31, it says, And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran his son's son, and Sarah his daughter-in-law, and his sons and his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan, and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. So Abram's family leaves Chaldea, and they go to Haran. But now we get into Genesis chapter 12, and God tells Abraham, Get thee out. He said, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land I will show thee. We're going to look at four things Abram got out for. First thing is, Abram got out for a land. In verse number one, it says, the Lord says, unto a land I, that I will show thee. This is a land that he is going to give Abraham and his descendants. This is not going to be shared. This is not going to be partial. This is not going to be split up. God said, I will show you a land that I'm going to give to you. You will be the patriarch. You will be the owner. You will be the possessor, and it will be a place and a land for your descendants. So Abram got out for a land. Verse number two, Abram got out for a nation. Verse number two, God says, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So Abram got out for a land, and Abram got out for a nation. He would make God would make his name, Abraham's name, great, and his descendants would not be a few, but would become a nation, and a great nation. So Abram got out for a land. Abram got out for a nation. In verse number three, Abram got out for a blessing. In verse number three, God said, "And I will bless them that bless thee." And I will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. God promised Abraham that the people, that his descendants, his great nation, and the land that God gave him, that God promised him, those that blessed his people would be blessed. And those that cursed Abram's people would be cursed. I mean, he made him a promise here. He said, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All families of the earth be blessed. There was a blessing to come from Abram, through Abram and his descendants in that land, out of that nation, that would just not be a blessing to them, but they in turn would bless all families, all people, all groups, all nations of the earth. And these three things that Abram got out for, that God promised him, these three things are the key marks in the Abrahamic covenant. God promised Abraham a land. God promised Abram a nation. And God promised Abram that that nation out of that land would be a blessing to the entire world. The last thing we're going to look at is what Abram got out. He got out for a land. He got out for a nation. He got out for a blessing. And lastly, Abram got out by faith. Abram got out by faith. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to read a few verses of Scripture. Hebrews 11, verse number 8. By faith, Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 12, Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars in the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore, 
innumerable. Verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. By faith, Abraham got out by faith. He departed. He went to a land he did not know. He went away he did not know. He followed a God whom he could not see for things he would not hold but saw as promise in the future. By faith, Abraham believed God. He got out for a land. He got out for a nation. He got out for a blessing. And he got out by faith. And we see as evidence through all the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. And in the modern times in which we live, we see that there is a land that God gave Abram and his descendants. We see that great nation just not found in the borders of modern day Israel, but all throughout the world. And we have that blessing that was promised to, through Abraham to all families of the earth. Just not the descendants of Abraham, just not the descendants of of Shem but to all families and all peoples of the earth when it says in John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that son was a son of David who was a son of Judah who was a son of Jacob who was a son of Isaac who was a son of Abraham God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life that whosoever is all families of the earth. And if God has given you a promise, he will keep it. If God gave you a promise, he will honor it. Though like Abraham, though like Isaac, though like Jacob, they never saw the fullness of the land that we saw in the time of David and in the time of Solomon. They never saw the great nation that left Egypt in the Exodus. They didn't see the flourishing and the growing in the land of Cana that we saw in these times. And they did not see the blessing that came through to the world in their own lifetime. But they have all seen it now. And they have all experienced. And they all dwell and continue to dwell with the one that made that promise. With the one that fulfilled that promise. With the one that is the promise. And if God has given you something or promised you something that it would happen and it would come to fruition and you have not seen it yet that doesn't mean it's not going to happen and even if we do not see or experience the things God has promised or laid out in our own lifetimes that doesn't mean that they will not come around God doesn't go anywhere God never changes if God kept a promise that he made to Abraham thousands of years ago he'll keep a promise he makes you in your lifetime